In this Neo 2 guide, we're going to be covering Guardian Spirits and Soul Cores and everything you could possibly want to know about them, how they work, how to select them, which to use with which. These sort of questions are all going to be answered. So if you've had questions about these things, then watch on. Guardian Spirits in Neo 2 are not new, but the way they're handled is different. Uh, they used to be able to level them up in Neo 1, now that's no longer the case, but instead you slot Soul Cores into them, which give you passive benefits as well as give you new powerful Yokai abilities. And Living Weapon has since been replaced by Yokai Shift which allows you to change into a demon of sorts and attack things with new moves. And this is all part of the Guardian Spirit. Starting with the basics, there are three Guardian Spirit types in Neo 2. You probably knew this already, but they are Brute, Feral, and Phantom. Every single Guardian Spirit falls into one of these categories, and they determine not only your Yokai Shift, this is how you look uh, when you shift into your Yokai form, but also the moves that you have, and also how your burst counter is wielded and what it looks like and what it does. Each Guardian Spirit also has an element associated with it, represented by its color. Red is fire, blue is water, and yellow is lightning. Guardian Spirits can be any of the three types, Brute, Feral, and Phantom, regardless of their element. Anima is a new resource in Neo 2, and it's used for burst counters as well as Yokai abilities, and it's gained by attacking and killing enemies. And each Guardian Spirit gives you a bonus to Anima gain in a different way. While you always gain Anima by attacking, Brutes give you extra Anima when you block, Feral Guardians give you extra anima when you attack multiple times in a row without being struck, and Phantoms give you extra anima when you strike with a ranged weapon. These help distinguish the different Guardian types and give them more of an identity. Just to note here that there are other ways to gain anima other than what I mentioned, such as Soul Core Special Effects, as well as using a Scampus. When a Scampus is following you around, you gain anima periodically, so that's the buff that the Scampus is giving you. Guardian Spirits also have special effects when they are equipped that apply immediately, and some that have requirements that you must meet in order to gain the bonuses of. These are always locked behind two different combinations of stats. It doesn't matter how much you have of one or the other of each of these stats as long as they meet the total requirement. But sometimes you will not be able to meet the requirements for these with the Guardian Spirit you want to use because weapon usually determines where you put your stats. Each weapon has its own stat scaling. So if you're using a weapon that doesn't synergize well with the Guardian Spirit, you won't be able to use all those bonuses unless you put points into stats that are not going to help you out. Once you reach a certain point in the game, you'll be able to slot a secondary Guardian Spirit that will provide you with one passive bonus that is half the amount it would normally be if it was your primary, and this is indicated by a distinct icon next to it. Sometimes these are locked bonuses behind stats, just like they would be if they were your primary, so you won't be able to use them for your secondary bonus if you don't meet these requirements, though you can still slot them as your secondary and swap to them while you're in combat by holding R1 and pressing L2. This will also allow you to use different Yokai abilities that you maybe have mapped to that secondary one, and then you can swap back and forth. Each of the three types of Guardian Spirits, Brute, Feral, Phantom, have a different Yokai Shift that not only look different, but also plays differently and is performed by pressing Triangle and Circle when your Amrita Gauge is full and shining. This is what will transform you. You gain Amrita when defeating enemies, and you can increase amount via items and equipment. It doesn't matter which Guardian type you have, you will always need to get your Amrita Gauge to 100 in order to be able to shift. Brute Guardians do melee attacks that hit harder and more slowly than the Feral type, Feral Guardian Spirits move extremely quickly, hitting fast and often for less damage than the Brute, but with more speed and style, and the Phantom Guardian Spirits attack from modest range, allowing them to stay out of melee, preventing them from being hit. No matter what Guardian Spirit type you use, you'll be able to summon your Guardian Spirit in this form by pressing the same two buttons, which are Triangle and Circle, and each Guardian Spirit has a different effect that's unique to it. You cannot spam it at will, however, because using your Guardian Spirit will hasten your return to human form, as will other things like blocking, dodging, attacking, and being hit, meaning that you will not be in this form very long, because these are in addition to the fact that the gauge itself drains over time anyway. Burst counters are also new to Neo 2 and allow the player to interrupt some burst attacks. These are the ones that glow reddish-orange that enemies and bosses do by pressing R2 and Circle at the correct time. This costs a certain amount of anima, which is located below your key, and each Guardian Spirit type handles these a bit differently. Brute Guardian Spirits sort of swing forward in a quick melee attack that interrupts any burst attack they come into contact with, but it has a very short range, meaning they need to be very close to the enemy in order to do this. If they're far away, they won't be able to get in range in time. Feral Guardian Spirits dodge forward into attacks, or they can dodge sideways or backwards, giving them iframes, and they only interrupt attacks that are hitting them. So you want to time this in order to be connecting with the swing of an enemy, in order to interrupt it perfectly. If you do it with a uh, burst attack that isn't an attack, or an attack that's winding up and has not yet connected with you, you'll miss the timing and you'll be hit, or you won't be able to interrupt it at all, making them effective at certain things, but they won't be able to interrupt every burst attack. 
Phantoms similar to Feral Guardian Spirits gain iframes when they use their burst counter, but they do not move in any direction, meaning they are the most difficult of the three in order to interrupt an attack, because you not only have to be right next to the enemy, but you have to time it perfectly for them to hit you, and they cannot interrupt attacks that are not attacking them specifically. While these are probably not enough alone for you to determine which Guardian Spirit you're going to use, they do play a large role in determining this because you might favor one specific Guardian Spirit type uh, with their burst counter, and if it doesn't have that burst counter type, then you may not want to use it. Soul Cores are also new to Neo 2 and can drop from every enemy in the game, even humans, and these can be slotted into your Guardian Spirit to a maximum of 3, eventually, in order to give you passive bonuses and yokai abilities. Each Soul Core has a type, Brute, Feral, or Phantom, and when matched with a Guardian Spirit of the same type, they can become more effective in certain cases, not all, but some cases, but for now, let's just discuss the basics, beginning with attack and defense. Each and every Soul Core in Neo 2, with the exception of Mortal Soul Cores, has an attack and defense number. These values are represented by the sword and armor icons beneath the name, and these are added directly to your status sheet of your character. That is to say, these are flat increases of attack and defense when you add them. The higher the number, the more attack and defense you're going to get. However, there is a multiplier to be taken into account with Guardian Spirits. Each Guardian Spirit has its own attack and defense multiplier that it multiplies the attack and defense values of each Soul Core against, giving you a total attack and defense for all your Soul Cores slotted. Some Guardian Spirits favor attack, some favor defense, some are quite balanced. So these are things you're going to want to factor in when you're choosing your Guardian Spirit. But just note that the difference between the highest attack and, and highest defense is not massive, so it shouldn't play a huge role unless you're getting higher and higher into the game. Phantom Guardian Spirits are usually defensive, Feral Guardian Spirits are usually balanced, and Brute Guardian Spirits are usually offensive. Of course, there are exceptions to these, that's not always true. Sometimes you can find a Brute that's balanced, or, you know, a uh, Phantom one that's offensive. So there are exceptions, but just generally speaking, the majority fall into those categories, so keep that in mind when, you know, figuring out which one to select. Soul Cores, on the other hand, don't generally follow the same principle, and they seem to vary completely independently of their type. Each Soul Core comes with four or five special effects, two of which are fixed, and are the same regardless of the level of the Soul Core, and two are randomized. Sometimes you'll have a third randomized bonus that is inheritable. It'll have a special icon next to it if this is the case, and that means if you Soul Fuse it with another Soul Core, you can actually gain that bonus and put it onto the other Soul Core that you want. Regardless of which Guardian Spirit type that you use, the special effect will not be impacted anyway, but you can enhance these via Soul Fusion. This allows you to combine two of the same Soul Core to very slightly increase the rank of the original Soul Core while destroying the second, and you can do this several times until you reach max rank. You might not do this a lot early on in the game because, frankly, you don't gain that much benefit from doing it, and you might be looking for better passive effects. But you can improve these effects via Soul Fusion, which also happens to increase the attack and defense of Soul Cores as well. When it comes to Yokai abilities, each Soul Core that drops grants you a Yokai ability when slotted, and these can be used when you gain enough anima, with each Yokai ability varying in cost dependent upon its strength. So which Yokai ability you want to slot is going to depend highly on which Guardian Spirit type that you use, what the special effects are, and how much the attunement cost is, because each Soul Core has an attunement cost to slot it, and each Guardian Spirit has a maximum attunement, meaning you cannot slot any Soul Core you want into any Guardian Spirit. This is done, obviously, to prevent you from just slotting all the powerful Soul Cores, no matter what, and just spamming those. Yokai ability damage is not affected by the color of the Soul Core, except in a few cases, and if you're using a Yokai ability that is a different type than the Guardian Spirit that you have equipped, then you will deal the same damage you normally would. However, some Guardian Spirits reward you with extra damage for using Yokai abilities that match their type. For example, Hiobishin increases Brute Yokai ability damage by 18%, and Nekomata increases Feral ability damage by 20%. These bonuses apply despite their descriptions, even when you're not shifted. To help you distinguish what these are, red soul cores are brute, blue are feral, and purple are phantom. You can, however, use soul fusion with a mortal soul core to change the type of a soul core from brute to feral, for instance. This would allow you to receive these passive bonuses with specific guardian experience and still use the yokai abilities that you want. These drop from human enemies, so you want to be on the lookout for them and hang on to them when you see them because they're extremely valuable. Soul Cores that are higher level do slightly more damage with their Yokai abilities. It's so negligible, it's almost not even worth mentioning. At level 29, for instance, against a level 78 Soul Core, you're seeing something like a 40, you know, 40 damage increase, somewhere between 30 and 40 damage increase for each hit of the ability. This is not much over the course of the game, so try not to worry too much about the level of your Yokai ability. It's not going to play as much of an impact as you think. And as you get higher and higher into the game, you're going to start leveling up more slowly, so it's going to have even less and less of an effect. 
When it comes to sacrificing soul cores, you're going to get a ton of these and you're just frankly going to need to get rid of them because they're going to take up inventory space. So if you have like 25 Gaki cores like I do, uh, you're going to want to destroy some of them in order to make space for more inventory. And the reason you would do this would be, you know, to create more inventory space, but it also gains you experience towards the shifting skill points that you need in order to gain passives in that tree. And it grants you crafting materials. So if you sacrifice a, a Gaki uh, soul core, you might get a Gaki crafting material, which is needed to forge weapons and armor. And the same is true for other soul cores. You'll gain their crafting materials from time to time. Um, just make sure that you use soul fusion before you destroy the cores so you can, you know, fuse up the one that you want, make sure it's at max rank, and then destroy your excess soul cores. Additionally, you can use soul cores when soul matching yokai weapons to reduce the cost significantly. This gets quite expensive later on in the game, and it's a great way to save you gold if you're low or just don't want to blow it all on a soul match. But this only applies to yokai weapons and cannot be used for other weapons and armor. But keep that in mind if you're using a yokai weapon, which you probably will in a lot of cases, you can got that one that you like, you can soul match it up for cheaper by sacrificing a soul core to it. Stay tuned for more Neo 2 guides, including builds, weapon guides, and check out a review for our thoughts in the game. We'll probably be doing another guide or another video on soul cores and Guardian Spirits a bit later on down the road when we have them all, maybe showcasing them all and what sort of builds you want to use them in. That's going to be a more advanced guide, and I didn't want to do that now because I don't have all of the Guardian Spirits and I don't have all the soul cores, and I didn't want to do one that was like 80% complete. We'll